Well, I decided to make some different handhelds for my Power Zapper CC2, and well, actually, it's going to be for both of them, so I just unplug them. But, um, you know, I like the device, and I think the copper is probably the most conductive in some ways, but I'm tired of cleaning the copper, so I'm going to go with 316 stainless steel. I know it's a little bit controversial, but 316, not 304, 316 stainless steel. I noticed like if you even use it in the HHO devices, if you know what I'm talking about, when they're putting like about, you know, 25 amps through it <laughs> with 12 volts, and you're not even putting that through this with your body, you're putting like nothing through it. But I mean like these devices uh, on the cars they're using for the HHO, even these, they don't even get screwed up. They don't even get discolored. They don't like get worn out when you're using 316 stainless steel. So. I don't think much comes off of this when you're using electricity, so especially when you have it covered with paper towel. So what I did was I measured out equal lengths, and I used you know just a red ruler, and I'm going to cut off right here and right here. So I have two pipes. I'll have this little section left over. I just got a one foot length, but I'm going to make them slightly longer slightly just a hair longer than the original ones and these are very close to the original width I like the width on these things though because some of the, some of the ones are like too wide and this one's about whatever the hell it is I don't know just under nine tenths of an inch whatever that comes down to so maybe seven eighths, seven eighths outside diameter. So that's about perfect. You know, when they're just a little bit bigger than that, they seem like they're too big. And I'm going to make them just a hair longer. So, but I'm going to have a way. I'm going to attach the wire to the inside because I'm not going to solder them. I'm going to do something else, and I'll show you what I'm going to do. But first, we're going to get the cutoff wheel, and we'll cut them off. So I just installed a new cutoff wheel. I don't know why, but. Um, these what these cutoff wheels are a lot less than these, a lot less money. Maybe it's because it's got this little lip, and I don't think you really need that little lip. Even though I got a skill saw, <laughs> I'm using this. <laughs> seems to work fine. It seems like it'll work fine for me. I don't see what's going to hit. So you know. Anyway. Okay, so I cut the pipes to length, and I. You know, I rounded out, you know, I kind of made this nice and smooth and beveled with the file. And I actually used the edge of the grinding wheel, but I got inside here with the file. Make sure there's no sharp edges on there. So, next step, and I'm going to use some heavier wires. I'm going to use a red and a black one. I'm going to use a black one for the ground and heavy duty stuff. Let's see, so it's a slight little modification, so I don't have to ever have to clean these again. So. <laughs> But that made short work of it. Actually, I'm being I'm going to get these from now on. These are uh, these are cheaper and they work just as good as these. So I don't know what wire I'm going to use on this is 12 gauge. You can see it's a lot thicker than the original. Not that the original is screwed up, but I'm just going to overbuild this. Now, what I really should do is use all stainless steel components, but I got just you know cadmium plated stuff and I'm sure what I'm going to do is I'm going to rivet it right to the bottom of this on the inside the rivet will be flush but since these are not stainless steel rivets these are steel rivets I'm going to do something to keep them from uh, getting corroded but uh, <laughs> it'll be heavy duty as all hell believe me so and if it does get corroded some years down the road I'll just, you know, I made, I made this wire just a little longer, like probably about, I don't know, five inches longer. I just cut an inch off of it and put stainless steel components on the end of it. Okay, so this turned out to be a total pain in the ass to drill that hole in there. I started it out with a drill bit, I mean a uh, drill press, but it doles up these drill bits really fast, even these coated ones. So yeah, I'm probably going to get a, uh, what do you call it? Um, Drill, drill bit sharpener because they go through these like butter. So anyway, these uh, fit in here. So we'll get them in there and we'll get the grommet on the inside. So that should hold it. And what we're going to do is we're going to put some super weather strip adhesive on around there to keep it from rusting and a little bit of, bit of, of tape, you know, a half length of this on the very end to cover that up. 
bunch of times so the water won't get in there and it shouldn't rust and uh, this is actually coated with cadmium so but if it ever rusts some years from now just um, put uh, stainless steel bolts in there or something like that or fittings or whatever the hell it is and um, this way if it ever breaks on the end um, you know if the, if the wire breaks on this end I can fix it no problem so but it's gonna be real heavy wire so it shouldn't okay so this one's installed it's in there rock solid <laughs> it ain't going nowhere so that is definitely gonna be solid as shit so anyway next one next step is to take the super 3m weather strip adhesive put it all around there and on the inside it should be alright it shouldn't really it shouldn't really rust do it on both of them and I'm gonna take uh, some of this tape half a length half a width of it go around it a bunch of times and um, I don't think that'll ever actually corrode for many many years if ever so the tape tape is on there and I put some uh, black twist ties on there these things right and what I did when I cut the ends off so there isn't like a little sharp burr there I used the file so like it's you know if you touch this any which way it's not sharp you know when you cut them off so the only thing is I got to install it on the ends here which is simple well there you go a couple totally overbuilt handhelds for the power zapper <laughs> Made out of stainless steel, pretty thick wall stuff. You could step on them or probably run them over a car and they wouldn't break. Seven eighths inch, uh, I don't know, they're probably about a little over five inches, I think. So that should hold up. Even though I didn't use stainless steel on the end, there's so much weather strip adhesive in um, tape and blah, it, it, the water would never get in there. Plus, it's a little bit. And I couldn't quite get these caps down all the way because it's such an oversized wire. I had to cut some of the strands off. But the caps are still on there solid. I got them on there a few threads and uh, they ain't pulling out. So, um, this way, and I don't think this is going to have a problem because, like I said, the HHO on the cars uses so much electricity, far more than you're putting through your body. I mean, thousands of times more probably. And I, I never see the plates, these get discolored. So, uh, I don't know. It's kind of controversial, but I'm doing it this way. And I'll keep the. Uh, the copper ones too, you know, but uh, that's why I don't have to clean them. So, I want to make them like uh, overbuilt, overbuilt, man. That's the way to do it. Yeah, we'll call this my uh, in the woods, all weather, all purpose uh, survival power zapper. <laughs> this is way, uh, you know, if the copper gets corroded and you're out there in the field or something, stainless steel, baby, stainless steel. And uh, we use some uh, solar panels to charge up the batteries and. Uh, keep us uh, healthy from the bubonic plague and everything else the Soviets will throw at us hopefully and the Chinese whatever <laughs>